As we have seen from the text, the brightness of the individual voxels in a B-mode image is determined by the strength of the echo signals returning from that section of the tissue. We can use this to our advantage in many ways, as the returning echoes can not only build up an image, they can also give us information about the physical nature of the tissue that we are interrogating. One of the great strengths of ultrasound is the ability to differentiate between a solid and a fluid-filled structure. Fluid causes very little attenuation of the signal and thus is hypoechoic or anechoic on ultrasound. However, the echoes returning from the deeper tissue are stronger than those from the adjacent tissue with the same depth because they haven't been attenuated the same amount. When this occurs, this is known as posterior enhancement. Examples of fluid field structures that are commonly seen in clinical ultrasound include a dis distended urinary bladder, a gallbladder, simple cyst, and the amniotic fluid around a fetus. Consider this example now of a distended urinary bladder. What we can see on this screen is the uh, transducer anteriorly on the pelvic wall, uh, and along this graduation here is the depth of tissue. So at this point we are five centimetres below the skin surface, and at this point we are 10 centimetres below the skin surface. As the ultrasound beam fans out, it follows the shape of the transducer head. As the, as the ultrasound beam comes down, part of it is then reflected and goes back up to the transducer to produce our signal. It's easy to appreciate from this image that sound waves travelling through here and then travelling back up again will have a certain degree of energy associated with it, whereas sound waves passing through this area, because they pass through a distended urinary bladder uh, full of fluid, when they come back to the transducer, they have a much higher signal associated with it. If you look beyond the urinary bladder then, in this particular area, you can see that this area is a much higher signal than this area out here because the sound waves have passed through urinary bladder here and not through urinary bladder over here. Conversely, very strong reflectors do not permit the transmission of sound as the signals simply bounce straight back to the transducer. This results in a very bright leading edge of the structure and no signal is seen beyond it. Uh, therefore, there, because there's no signal, it's very, very dark. This phenomenon is known as posterior shadowing. Examples of strong reflectors that we see in clinical ultrasound include bones, gallstones, kidney stones and gas. So we look for this particular posterior shadowing in an effort to try and de determine the nature of the tissue that we're looking at. Now in this image of a fetal bone, because the bone is calcific, we can see that the leading edge of the bone is seen as a very, very bright reflective interface and there is no signal seen beyond it. Again, this posterior shadowing confirms the calcific nature of the bone. Returning to the example of the urinary bladder, again this is a transverse image. We have our urinary bladder here full of fluid and this is the uh, left adenexo in this particular patient. As, as we can now appreciate, we know that our ultrasound beam will pass down here, pass all the way back to the transducer, and we have posterior enhancement here because of the high signal. However, once we come over to the left adnexa, or, or the left side of uh, the lower pelvis, you see that the sound waves comes down, but this time it meets with this very, very high reflector from uh, gas within the bowel and is reflected straight back to the transducer. So what we end up with is a very, very high signal from the reflector and no signal beyond it. So this area where there's no signal beyond it is known as posterior shadowing. In summary, ultrasound can be used to distinguish between a solid versus cystic structure. This can play an important role in the diagnosis of the appropriate pathology.